Learn English through stories of 31 PDF. Adapted and modified by Kowant Singh Sandhu. Contents 1. Blue Moon Beach, Chapters 4 to 7, The End. 2. Story of Pronouns 5. 3. Dialogues. 4. Picture Dictionary Page. Blue Moon Beach by Sue Murray. Chapter 4 Where is Tim? We must get help, says Tim. I'll stay here and watch the truck. You go and get help. Okay. I'll go and get Constable Carter. He's the police officer here in Blue Moon Beach. But first I want to see what the smugglers are doing. I'm going to have a quick look. I want to tell Constable Carter all about them. He'll need to know how many there are and what they are doing. I want to see if the Sea Eagles are okay too. Okay, but be very careful, Sam, says Tim. And be quick. I'll be careful. You be careful too, Tim. Be very quiet and listen for the smugglers. Stay here under this tree. They must not see you. Stay away from the truck, I say. Okay, says Tim. I run through the trees. I know the way to the nest very well. I'm really worried about the sea eagles and their eggs. I try to be quiet. I'm scared the smugglers will see me or hear me. I know I am near the nest. Suddenly, I hear some people coming. Then I see two men. They are the men I saw on the beach this morning. Come on, come on, one says. We're late. We mustn't stay here too long. The boat is waiting for us at Sunshine Bay. Okay, okay, says the other man. Oh, it bit me. The men have the sea eagles. They are the smugglers. I am angry. I want to scream at them. But most of all, I want to get the birds back. So I am quiet and I don't move. I can see that the men have knives. I don't want the birds to get hurt. And the men are both bigger and stronger than me. What can I do to stop them? It's best to leave this to the police, I think. Constable Carter will know what to do. I move quietly behind a tree. What's that? says the smaller man. He looks towards me. It is very dark. Can he see me? I am really scared. I close my eyes. What's what? says the other one. Over there I saw. Come on, Mac. It's dark. You can't see a thing. Stop worrying. We're nearly at the truck. The truck is him. The men walk off. They are carrying the birds. The birds are making a lot of noise. Has Tim heard the men and the birds? I follow the men quietly. I hear some noise, then I hear the truck start. I run. B. Truck isn't there anymore. Tim, Tim. I call. Tim. Where is Tim? Did the smugglers see him? Is Tim in the truck with the birds? Is he hurt? Tim, Tim. There's no answer. Chapter 5 Finding the truck. I must get help. I start running. The hotel is closer than Constable Carter's house. Dad will know what to do. Dad will help. But Mum and Dad will be very angry with me. It was wrong to take Tim out at night. It was wrong to look for the birds after we saw the truck. Worst of all, it was wrong to leave Tim with the truck. 
his mother will be very worried and very angry. No, I won't go to the hotel. I'll run to Constable Carter's house. Blue Moon Village isn't very big. I know where he lives. His house is next to my school. It is only two kilometers from the beach. What can one police officer do to stop the smugglers? I heard where the smugglers are going, Sunshine Bay. I can tell Constable Carter. Perhaps he'll phone the police officer there. And that police officer can stop the smugglers. It's very dark, but I know the roads well. I run and run. Will Constable Carter be at home? The police officer in Sunshine Bay must stop the truck. I'm very worried about Tim and the birds. Is Tim okay? I try not to cry. It is late at night. There are no cars on the road. There are no houses here. Then I see it, the truck. It stopped on the side of the road. I stop running. The two smugglers are standing beside the truck. The bigger one is very angry. He hits the truck. You drive this truck every day. You must know what's wrong with it. Why won't it go? We must get out of here. The second man just stands there. He looks very unhappy. I need to open the back doors of the truck. I need to see if Tim is in there. I need to get the sea eagles out. I walk very quietly and very slowly to the truck. The men are at the front of the truck now. One of them is talking on his mobile phone. He says, yes, we're at Blue Moon Beach, yes, we have the birds, but we can't drive the truck. He is quiet, then he says, it just stopped, I don't know why we can't start it again, what do we do now? He's quiet again. Then he says, okay, we'll wait for you to call us back, but don't be long. I am at the back door of the truck. Very quietly, I start to open the door. I am very, very scared. S Sam? The voice comes from the dark trees beside the truck. I stare into the trees. It's me, Tim calls quietly. I walk very slowly over to the trees. I see Tim. He's under the biggest tree. We talk very quietly. Are you okay, Tim? Are you hurt? I'm all right, he says. I'm sorry, Tim, I say to him. He smiles at me. Why? Because I left you with the truck. Because I didn't go to the police officer's house. I went to look at the birds. That's okay says Tim. I stop the smugglers, I stop their truck. He smiles again. You stop the truck how? I forget to be quiet and Tim puts his hand over my mouth. Shoo. Be quiet and I'll tell you. After you left me, I thought about what to do. I know a lot about trucks and cars. My grandfather has a farm. He works on his trucks and cars. I help him. I love it. So I knew what to do with the smuggler's truck. I got under it and I hit the fuel pipe with a rock. What's a fuel pipe? I asked quietly. The men are sitting in the truck now. They must be waiting for the mobile phone to ring. The windows are closed so they can't hear us. You don't know much about cars and trucks, do you? Says Tim with a smile. The fuel pipe takes petrol to the engine. The engine needs petrol to go. I know that. I say. Okay. So I hit the fuel pipe again and again. Now the petrol can't get through to the engine. Well done. I say. Then those men came back with the birds, 
and they put the birds in the back of the truck. I wash from behind a big rock, says Tim. The men were careful with the birds, though. They didn't hurt them. What about the eggs? I ask. Did the smugglers take them too? Are they in the truck? They mustn't get coal. I don't know where the eggs are, says Tim. I didn't see them. What happened next? I ask. Well, the men got into the truck and the engine started. I was worried. I thought, there's petrol left in the engine and the fuel pipe. I didn't know what to do, so I jumped into the back of the truck. The truck went for a while, but then the engine stopped. So I jumped out, and here I am. I smile, but then Tim says, what do we do now? I don't know, I say. I want to get the birds out of the truck, but we can't. They will make a lot of noise and the men will hear. Also, the birds are very heavy. We can't carry them far. We need to go to the police officer's house, says Tim. But we can't leave. The smugglers will see us. We both sit quietly for a while. Then I know what to do. Tim, we need to get some ropes and nets out of the truck. We must do it very quietly. Tim comes with me to the truck. We open the back door very slowly. I look in. I can't see the sea eagles. I do see some large boxes. Perhaps the birds are in them. I take some ropes out of the truck. This must work. Chapter 6 The men see us. I'm standing at the back of the truck. The bigger man gets out of the truck. He is talking on his mobile phone again. He is angry. No, we can't wait, he says. You must come and get us now. Suddenly he sees me. I know who you are. I scream at him. You're a bird smuggler. You have sea eagles in your truck. I'm going to get the police. I start running away from the truck. Hey! He puts his mobile phone away. You stop! He shouts to the other smuggler. Mac, come here, quickly, I found a boy he knows about the birds. I hear the truck door opening. Mac shouts, stop, too. They both run after me, I look back at them. The bigger man is holding his knife. I am very scared. I jump over some ropes on the road. Now, Tim, now? I shout. Tim is standing on the other side of the road. He is holding onto the ropes. He pulls them. Suddenly there are nets and ropes in front of the smugglers. Both men run into the nets. The bigger man drops his knife. He puts his hands up to try to get out of the nets. Tim pulls the ropes. I help him. The men are shouting. Tim and I are screaming. We sit on the smugglers, but the men are very strong and very angry. We can't hold them for very long. Will they get out of the nets? Help, help! I shout. Get off me, shouts the bigger man. A car drives up and stops. Is that you, Sam? It's the police officer, Constable Carter. He is getting out of his car. Sam? Are you okay? I had a phone call from the people down the road. They said they heard a lot of people shouting. Who are these men? Oh, Constable Carter, it's so good to see you. These men are bird smugglers. They put the sea eagles in the back of their truck. The men try to get away from us. But Constable Carter soon has them in the back of the police car. He calls on his radio for more police. He sees the knife on the ground. 
Sam. These men had knives. I know. Tim and I had to help the Sea Eagles, Constable Carter, I say quietly. Can we look in the truck now? I need to know the birds are okay. I look into the boxes. The birds are not hurt. Best of all, the eggs are in one of the boxes. Constable Carter looks at the birds and the eggs. Well done, boys. What will Mum say, says Tim. We both smile. Chapter 7 Friends Tim and I help Constable Carter put the sea eagles and their eggs back in the nest. It's not easy. The birds are very heavy, and they don't like us holding them. One bird bites me. The other police officers have taken the smugglers away. They are going to go to Sunshine Bay to look for the smugglers' friends in their boat. Tim and I go back to Blue Moon Hotel. Constable Carter comes with us. Dad and Mom are in bed. They both come to the front door. We all go into the front room. Constable Carter tells them about the birds and the smugglers. I was right. My parents are very angry. They are happy Tim and I are okay, but they are not happy with me. Mum gets Tim's mother. She walks in and sees Tim. Tim, why aren't you in bed? Tim doesn't speak. He doesn't look at his mother. My mother says, Constable Carter, this is Mary Bailey, Tim's mother. Constable Carter says, Good evening, Mrs. Bailey. I'm Steve Carter. I'm the police officer here in Blue Moon Beach. Your son Tim and his friend Sam are heroes. They helped the police catch two bird smugglers. Tim's mother opens her eyes very wide. What, bird smugglers, Tim? What's Constable Carter talking about? Let's sit down and listen to the boy's story, says Dad. Mom says, I'll make some hot chocolate. Soon, we're all drinking hot chocolate. Constable Carter says, Sam, Tim, tell us more of your story. When did you know about the smugglers? I say, I saw those men on the beach this morning. They were looking at the sea eagles and the nest, and tonight, we saw the things in the back of their truck, the boxes and the ropes and the nets, then I knew. Why didn't you go and get Constable Carter, asks Dad. Or come back home, says Mom. That's a good question, says Mrs. Bailey. It is the job of the police to catch smugglers, Tim. I'm very angry. Why did you go out? I told you not to go out at night, those men. She starts to cry. Mum goes to her and holds her hand. Now, Mary. Don't cry, says Mum. Tim is okay. Boys will be boys. No, says Mrs. Bailey. Not my Tim. I need him. It's just the two of us now. My family and Constable Carter do not speak. Tim is quiet for a minute. Then he looks at his mother and says, I'm sorry, Mom, but I'm 15. I need to try new things. She looks at him. She gives him a small smile. Oh, Tim, where's my little boy gone? You're right, but no more catching smugglers, okay? Okay, Mom, says Tim, with a big smile. I want to hear more about it, says Dad. You were very clever to stop the truck. Tim stopped the truck, I say. And we caught them with their own nets, says Tim. Tim and his mother stay with us for two weeks. Tim and I tell our story again to Constable Carter and some other police officers. They did not catch the other bird smugglers in the boat at Sunshine Bay. But Tim and I are just happy the sea eagles are okay. I show Tim lots of things at Blue Moon Beach. Soon he can name most of the birds and some of the fish. Every day we go to the beach and I teach him to swim. We go out deeper every day.
Some mornings, Mrs. Bailey sits on the beach and watches. She smiles a lot more these days. One day, Tim says, come in for a swim, Mum," And she does. Tim teaches me things, too. He teaches me about cars. We climb under Dad's car and Tim shows me the fuel pipe. He shows me how he used the rock on the smuggler's truck. Tim and his mother are going home tomorrow. I don't want them to go. Tim wants to stay, too. Tim and I walk down to the beach and have a swim. Then we go out to the rocks. Tim wants to have one last look at the sea eagles. Tim and I don't go near the nest these days, but we see the birds flying above us. One of the birds flies down to the nest. Then we hear a noise coming from the nest. It's a bird noise, but it's not like the noise I've heard sea eagles make before. What's making that noise? asks Tim. Let's go and see, I say. Come on. We go a little closer to the nest, and what do we see? A baby sea eagle. Only one. Perhaps the other a got cold. But this baby sea eagle looks strong and well. Its mother is giving it a small fish to eat. Tim and I look up. We watch the other sea eagle flying in circles over Blue Moon Beach. In three months, the baby will be flying too, I say. I'll come back and see that, says my friend Tim. The end. Two, pronouns five. Demonstrative pronouns. The words this, these, that, and those are called demonstrative pronouns. They are showing words. This is my house. This is a hill. These are donkeys. What is this? Did you drop this? Hi, Banto. This is Banta. That is Rena's house. That is a mountain. Those are horses. What are those? We can do better than that. No, that's not mine. That's amazing. Hello, who is that speaking, please? Hello, is that you, George? Three dialogues. Expensive house. A. We can't afford this house. B. Are you sure? A. We will be house rich but cash poor. B. What do you mean? A. Our monthly payments will be too high. B. We won't have any money for other things? A. No, we won't have money for gas or food. B. We'll be eating peanut butter sandwiches. A. Without the peanut butter. B. That's no good. A. We have to find a cheaper house. B. Of course. We can't live without gas or peanut butter. 4. Picture Dictionary Page